Hello, welcome to Snails and Fairy Dust. Today I'm making these earrings, which I call bead soup earrings. It's just a simple double brick stitch around a brass frame, and even a beginner can do it, so it's going to be easy and fun. I have this jar that I throw all of my leftover beads into when I don't feel like putting beads away, and I call it my bead soup jar. And that is what I'm going to be using today. Um, there are all kinds of beads in there, but I'm going to just be picking out the size 11 Miyuki Delicas so that I have um, a uniform bead to work with. Additionally, I'm going to be using Fireline and a six pound weight crystal Fireline. And I have my brass frame, which is teardrop shape, whatever shape you want to use. And I have a size uh, 12 beading needle and that's it. So let's get started. So you want to take a pretty sizable piece of thread. Um, for me, that's about five, it's a little over five feet, the piece I'm using, because it's just a tricky project to sort of re-thread in the middle if you need to. Not impossible, but better to start with something a bit longer. And then I'm going to make a little double knot onto my frame. So I go over and under on one side, and then I take the other side and go over and under again. And then we're just going to pull that tight. And now we're ready to get started beading. So this is going to be double brick stitch. So I'm going to start with four beads. And like I said, I'm just picking out the Delica beads, the size 11 <laughs> Delica beads out of there, because there are a lot of different size beads in here and styles of beads. OK, so I've got four of those Miyuki Delica beads. Use whatever kind of beads you want. Just make sure they're the same size. That's the most important thing here. They have to be the same size. Okay, so I'm taking my four beads down to the frame. I'm gonna get that little tail out of my way. And I'm gonna bring the needle from the back to the front of the frame. We'll get a better look of that in a second. And then I'm going to take my needle and come back up through the second two beads. Pull that tightly. And then I'm going to come down through the first two beads, like so. Pull that down. And now I'm going to go back up through those second two beads again. And that's going to get the beads sitting where we need them to sit. So pull that tightly. And there you go. Now, for these first couple um, rounds, you're thread is still going to slide up and down that piece. So just make sure you're holding it steady um, and it will start to get tight as we add more. So now I have two more beads. I'm going to pull those down and then this time I'm going to come around from the back to the front and then come back up through those two beads. And then that's it. We don't have to do all that looping around like we did on the first two. So there we go, our second two, and you want to keep sort of pushing them into place. You don't want it all the way at the top because we need to put our um, ear hook up there. So you want some space at the top. So we're going to pick up two more, two more beads there, and slide those down. And then you're going to bring your needle from the back to the front again. And through those two beads. Pull, pull, pull. Got stuck there. Just take your time. Make sure the thread ends up where you need it to go. And then pull that over. And with each one, you want to give it a good tug. Make sure those beads are tight and secure in there. So we're going to keep going with this process. Two beads, slide them down. Needle from the front to the, from the back to the front, sorry. And then back through those two beads. So coming through the last bead into the first bead you've just added. And then there you go. Pull that tightly. And you want to just always sort of notch that over. So pull it to the left and then pull it to the right. And that will really secure it in there. And you want to have a very strong thread for this. Um, Fireline is a good strong thread. Just because of all the friction you have of the thread on that brass wire, you don't want to use a weaker thread because it will eventually sort of wear down and break. So important, it's important to use the right tools. Um, I know I say this all the time, but the right size needle is going to help you not have headaches. The size 12 needle 
It can go through the beads over and over again. The right thread is not going to break on you, not going to stretch on you. It's important. So get your good needles, get your fire line. Okay, so here we are. I have worked down the edge of this teardrop shape. And here's where we're going to have a bit of a problem is going around these curves. You have to be um, a bit more diligent about your tightening of the beads um, because you don't want big gaps um, when you go around those corners. So let's see. So we're just going to like really make sure that you're getting it in there tight. On the second round, we're going to see more where we have to sort of fill in for those curves. But for this first curve, for this shape anyway, um, I'm able to do it without um, adding any extra beads or anything. So now we're going to add our second row. And the second row is where the curve is going to get tricky. So to begin the second row, I am going to flip my work. I'm always working from my non-dominant hand towards the dominant hand. So I'm holding in the non-dominant hand. I'm picking up four beads because we're starting a new row new row of double brick stitch. So I've got my four beads and I'm just going to slide my needle underneath the second thread bridge from the outside, like so. And then I'm going to come back up through those second two beads. And if I could get there, let's see. <laughs> so we're going to come up through those. And then we're going to go down through those first two beads again, just like we started this whole thing. So down through the first two beads. And now up through those second two beads again. And pull that very tightly. And now you have the first two beads, two sets of beads of your second row. And for the rest of this row, we're just going to do the same thing. Um, we're coming underneath the thread bridge with two beads at a time. So instead of going underneath the, the metal frame, this time we're going underneath those little thread bridges. So we're going to go down the side. And now we're going to see where the curve gets a little tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to just add these beads in there and see where you just have to be a bit intuitive about it where we're gonna to need to add extra beads. So let's take a look at that process. Um, here I've added an extra bead I didn't need, so I got rid of that. I'm gonna pull this tight and take a look at the angle. Okay, so that one is, you see how it's sort of tilting it to the left there? So I want them to be straighter than that. So I'm gonna add a second set of beads underneath that same thread bridge to balance out that curve because otherwise you end up with a lot of exposed thread. So you see that I've put that second one in there. You can't even tell it's not supposed to be there. And now I'm going to continue adding as normal underneath the thread bridges until I see another place in this curve where I think it's going to be necessary to add um, to add an extra set of beads. So let's take a look here. Now, that one looks pretty good. I'm going to keep going. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you an example in here of where it's not right. Okay, which is going to be this one. So see, when I tighten this one, get that thread out of the way. When I tighten this one, see there's just that gap in the thread. That's what you don't want. So it's okay. I'm just going to take this out. And you do the same thing. If you're going along and you see it just doesn't look right, take it out. Don't be afraid to undo your work, re-thread your needle, and then add your beads back on. Um, so it's just a bit intuitive with this. You just want it to lay flat. So I'm picking up two more beads. And so now I know this one, I want to share a thread bridge with the last two beads. So I'm going to go underneath that same thread bridge as the last two beads. And I'm going to come back up through those beads. And now when we tighten it, look how beautiful that is. That's what you want it to look like. So now I'm just going to keep going around this curve in the same way, two at a time. Um, I just wanted to really show you that technique in order to get your curve smooth. And just keep going through there. And 
when you get to the end, I will show you how to weave your threads back in. So I'm just going to keep going here. This is really a satisfying project for me because I don't have to think about a pattern. I'm not really counting other than two at a time. Um, and it's just a way to use up your beads. And it's really fun. Like these earrings, when I say they go with everything, they go with everything. It's amazing. So I hope you will try it. Um, I will try to find some of these shapes and link them into my Amazon um, store. But you can do it, you know, with any sort of brass shape you could find. You could definitely incorporate this technique. Do it around a circle, do it around a semicircle, do it around a hexagon, a triangle. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a fun way to just use up some beads and add some color to your wardrobe. So here we go. That one I also added an extra an extra set of beads to the same bead thread, if you notice there. And then now I'm pretty much around that curve and I shouldn't have a problem anymore. And just make sure you keep tightening those up, keep those beads nice and tight. Um, I have, you'll see bead work like this sometimes where people just leave those big thread gaps. And I just feel like the thread's so exposed. Um, that it's just not a good look and it's not very secure for your work. I also like how the bead color, the color combinations come together. As you're doing this, suddenly you see like color combinations and beads where you're like, ooh, that's kind of cute. Maybe I'll try that um, on purpose sometime. So just keep going down the edge like that. Here we are on our very last two beads. So we're gonna pick up two more go through that last bead thread. And you wanna just, um, like I said at the beginning, you do wanna leave that gap at the top of the earring um, in order to add in your hardware. So you don't wanna bead right up to the top. You need to have a little wiggle room for your earrings to wiggle. Okay, so there we have done that. And then to secure this, I am just going to weave back down into that second row. So I'm gonna go down that one, I'm gonna go up the next one, and just sort of going back and forth to create tension so that um, this thread isn't gonna come undone. And so you don't need to make any knots, it's unnecessary. If you go back and forth enough times like this, um, it will be secure. Here I'm gonna go around, loop around these two groups of beads a couple of times to just create some extra tension. And yeah, so you're gonna do that, weave that in and then clip that thread. And then after that, you're gonna take that original um, tail from where you first started, thread that onto your needle, and then just take that one up into a couple of beads. This one has a knot from where we started, so you don't need to secure it quite so intensely. Um, so I'm just gonna take that into a couple of beads here and hide it and then clip that thread as well. Like so. And now we're going to add our hardware. So to add the hardware, I am using um, two jump rings. I think they are about six millimeter jump rings. And then I have my ear wire as well. You could also, if you just had a really big ear wire, you might be able to do that. Um, but I am doing mine this way. So I'm taking my two jump rings. I've opened that jump ring by twisting it. You always want to twist the jump ring open. Don't pull it apart from side to side. Um, and then I'm going to take that second jump ring and then I'm going to open that one like so. And that one I'm going to add to the frame. I like adding two jump rings and then your ear wire because you get a little more dangle from the earring and it ends up having the um, earring uh, sit forward rather than to the side. So depending on how you want it to hang, I mean, feel free to do it however you want. That's the way I like to do it. I've closed that jump ring. That is good on there now. I'm just gonna check. I could see that one isn't quite closed all the way. I just wanna straighten that up with my flat nose pliers there. And now we have a good dangle and we have a cute little bead soup earring. I'm telling you guys, these have been the earrings I've been wearing 
all week um, because they just go with everything and I don't have to think about it. And they add a big pop of color. They're sort of like the perfect things to take on vacation with you in the summer. I mean, you can wear them every day on the beach. It'd be super cute. I hope you enjoy this fast little project and um, I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me and it helps me keep this channel going. And I appreciate you being here. Have a great day.